Right then, hello everyone, and we are at the end of another week of trading. Uh, to start the week, start the week over the course of the weekend, we did have some news out of China. Uh, China that they were going to drop their COVID measures on on travelers coming into the country. There was no need for quarantine anymore in China. Yeah, so there's obviously an influx of people that have not been able to go back for for near three years at this point. Or well, three years it did start there. Well, I think it was November 2019 it started there. So you know, three years not being able to see your family. Obviously, it's a pretty long time for the Chinese people. So they've had an influx of people into the country over the last week. Uh, you know, travelers are allowed to return. People are allowed home to see their family. So um, and that's obviously a positive then for the economy. You know, if more people can come in and out of the economy, the economy can, you know can, can go can get a little bit back, a little bit more back on its feet and start to grow, uh, start to grow kind of in line with 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 the growth that many other countries experienced over the course of their reopening. So what we can see then is 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 the dollar against the one you know tanking lower and it's tanking lower which is obviously strength in the chinese one so you know over the last kind of week definitely definitely over the last week last couple of weeks i think markets probably sensed that this was going to happen that they were going to drop their covid curbs and they were going to reopen their borders fully for people to come in obviously markets have taken that as a positive and the chinese one has continued to sell off at a more aggressive pace against the dollar than any of the other respective currencies so that continues to push lower and and we get the chinese stock market up just get it up on the chart for a second and that continues to push higher uh, it's rebounded quite aggressively off the lows down near eleven thousand, as you can see and now we're up at near fourteen thousand. and you have to imagine these things have got have got room to run they might have to imagine they got legs to run i mean you know they've only just recently over the last week reopened their borders you know what what happens in a couple of months when they reopen their borders and you know things start to pick up manufacturing starts to pick up and they and you know the economy starts to grow again that's going to be nothing but positive for for chinese related assets in terms of the currency in terms of the currency i mean you're going to hope that continues lower but certainly the stock market certainly the stock market you know, that's, that's been quite subdued for a while you can see you can see really you know since since back in february of 2021 it's just been in a very very clear downtrend with these covid measures that that, that have been ongoing in china for obviously for a long while if this then can can continue to push higher and then the economy can continue to grow you could easily see this back towards easily back towards fifteen thousand. these levels up here 16 and a half um, even towards eighteen thousand and beyond if this continues to go if other if global stock markets start to turn around at some point as well you know the, the the china reopening trade in my opinion has legs to run obviously you don't want to buy at the highs you don't want to sell at the lows and and, and dollar one but it's, there's no reason for that stopping unless you get a kind of global downturn in, in in stocks but the chinese related assets kind of have a mind of their own so i would definitely keep an eye on that as we go on into the future the chinese stock market and the chinese currency definitely ones to keep an eye on with that reopening trade um, we'll stay on this chart actually get this back get one get another chart back up we will get the the dax and the chart up my stone that i like to use dax futures but we can um we have a look at this and and you kind of the main mover of this week the big mover of this week and and i suppose last week back end of last week and you look at it is the dax it's just been a one-way train down from around 13,800 13,600 back up above 15,000 now and the highest we have been in nearly a year since we know we are back at we are back at the moment back at the same price as we were when russia decided to invade ukraine and you know that largely driven by the fact that you know there was a resilient end um, according to goldman sachs economists and there was a resilient end to 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 uh, resilient end of 2022 throughout the european economy and they now no longer expect the eurozone to enter a recession and markets have taken a liking to that to that statement to that to that report um that they released earlier on in the week you know, likely have been acting on it before they released it to us but you know that's their thoughts and markets do listen to these banks they do listen to goldman sachs especially so you know when they say something markets do not take it with a pinch of salt they do take it into consideration and obviously the dax has been flying off the back of that the european benchmark and if the eurozone can avoid a recession well then that seems positive for european related assets as well certainly the stock market as well and um, we did have comments out from the ecb to go with that that they are approaching the end of the hiking cycle which is a slightly dovish remark so couple those th two things together and the dax continues to to push higher at a pretty aggressive pace yeah, that brings us then back to the calendar we'll jump back to the calendar and we will have a quick 
look at uh, inflation. We had inflation out yesterday, a pretty tricky one to trade. Um, there was an initial reaction, but then the the, the, the reaction to, the, to, to that and the rest of the US session throughout the rest of the course of the day, pretty pretty kind of choppy pretty all over the place not a lot you can really do with that unless you caught the initial move you can see the cpi total rate of inflation exclude or sorry including food and fuel prices uh, dropped 0.6 percent but it's bang in line with market consensus and you come over to the core cpi you know dropped 0.3 percent so we're still continue to make progress which is which is good it shows these hikes are working and we are getting inflation under control and like they both continue to push continue to push lower but if you have a look at the s p if we'll just jump on a five minute chart you can see you can see yes they i mean look at that for price action you know you are you are straight down you know it's a bit of a broken chart here but it kind of shot straight back down to here then pushed higher then pushed back lower again then pushed higher and then back lower and then you kind of you've met in the middle over the over the kind of following 24 hours so not a lot you can really do with that yesterday unless you manage to get involved in that initial spike lower apart from that yeah you know pretty risky trading in the aftermath of that to be fair and that just shows us that you know we need to see deviations from the consensus from market consensus in order to get a clear directional move from these data releases so they don't all work the same you know you cannot just trade every single one of them every single one of them is not going to be not going to end up profitable again you've managed to catch a short-term move yesterday well done if you didn't and got chewed up a bit you can't win them all you had a very clean clean move in one direction back on the 13th of december uh, the last cpi printed did then turn around a couple of hours later but for a couple of hours you know for certainly for for that initial move higher definitely an aggressive move higher that was that was a little bit easier to trade than than it was yesterday but apart from that then you got to look at markets then the other markets that have then reacted that sorry i've changed all the charts you get to the s p and the s p is back at this trend line this trend line's been going on a while it has pushed higher likely due to uh likely due to yields if we just get the us the us tenure uh, the yields on the US 10 year they continue to push lower over the course of this year as do global bond yields global bond yields have pushed lower over the course of the year you know you you look at German bonds you look at you look at you know UK Australian whatever whatever bonds you want pushing lower um, and that then signals interest rates potentially pushing lower and that then has implications for the respective assets mostly gold as you can see here gold continues to fly continues to fly likely due to likely due to the 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 pullback in yields the the continuation of the move lower in yields over the course of this year has accelerated that move higher in gold which which as gold is a non-interesting non-interesting non-interest rate bearing asset it then tends to to enjoy environments where yields push lower and then vice versa when yields push higher and you can generate you can get more yield buying government bonds gold tends to push lower in an environment like that and the same goes for well the opposite goes for a currency sorry when the when the yield on a government bond pushes lower the currency also pushes lower and you can see then this downtrend in the dollar has continued into this week um, and the downtrend of the downtrend on the us 10 year has continued over the course of this year or kicked back in over the course of this year after a rally over the uh, over the days before and just after christmas so what that all means kind of going forward i mean you've got this level down here three uh, three three forty on 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 the u.s 10-year yield and i think that's an important level if we can break that we've not got much in terms of terms of terms of levels really down to towards 2.5 i mean it's obviously a big call if we get that if we get down there but nothing really in the terms of in terms of levels to kind of stop us and get us to turn around so if that level does fall the 340 does fall and we do push lower you'd probably expect this s p to break up through this trend line and continue higher you expect gold to continue higher expect the dollar continue to continue lower you know and a lot a lot of trading opportunities come can come off the back of yields getting moving you've then got the dax that may continue to push higher and you've also got those chinese assets that you would probably look to try and trade again buying at the highs on 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 the stock index and then selling at the lows on dollar one a little bit troublesome you would be hoping for pullbacks to get in at better prices bit of a discounted price but you know there's no harm keeping your eyes on those assets and sitting and waiting to try and make some cash right uh, we will flick across the next week right we'll have a quick flick across to uh across the next week have a look at the data out next week got the blj right we got the blj out out, out next week now we did have out the blj a, a kind of surprising monetary policy adjustment they raised the upper band 
of their yield on on the 10-year government bond up to a a a, a top of the range of of, of 0.5 percent which is quite a hawkish step and um, they've not communicated to us how they're gonna how they're gonna combat their their bond buying program their relentless bond buying program but you know yields they're allowing yields to rise a little bit higher which has which has helped the yen to strengthen the yen continues to strengthen and we'll have to see then what they say to us next wednesday you know do they give us another adjustment do they do they decide to give us another hawkish step which then sends the yen through the roof we we'll look at the uk we got some uh, labor market figures out of the uk next week we're expecting not no change in the unemployment rate we did however have a uh, november i didn't catch on the last week's calendar but we did have uh, we did have gdp figures out of out of the uk earlier on this morning which which showed a surprise increase um, in the in the in in, in growth of 0.5 percent in the month of november now you've got to if you kind of think to yourself what goldman sachs have alluded to over the course of this week about the eurozone avoiding a recession if the uk can print a a, a positive growth figure for december that avoids a q4 recession which the central bank did predict right now if we can get some other countries following suit managing to avoid recessions that's got to be positive for risk and it i know interest rates are quite high and we're going to have to see how business conditions end up looking like off the back of that but if these major economies can avoid recessions which was the talk of the town heading into this year was a global economic uh, economic downturn with china reopening with the eurozone potentially avoiding recession maybe the uk can avoid a recession in the back end of back end of last year and hopefully prolong it as as, as long as possible what if the US can avoid a recession as well? There's a couple of things to think about going forward that may be positive for risk. Yeah, and we'll have to kind of cross that bridge when it comes to it. We've got to keep that in the back of our mind as well as we look to try and take some trading opportunities in the coming weeks and months ahead. Uh, but anyways, then, I think I'm going to wrap it up there then. I'll let you get on with your weekend. So have a nice weekend. Hopefully trading went well this week. There's a couple of assets worth looking at. DAX flying higher, gold flying higher, Chinese related assets got moving. So there's a couple of opportunities there to take. If you didn't manage to catch any, don't worry. We'll be back next week for another week of trading. So that's it from me then. Have a nice weekend and I'll speak to you next week.